The writing and recording of Tomorrow Never Knows was a clear indication of the Beatles' ongoing interest in drugs. Tomorrow Never Knows found them explicitly revealing, albeit to those in the know, their discovery of LSD. The song's inspiration coming from Lennon's desire to try to render sonically what it was like to have an LSD trip. Along with George Harrison's contributions, it wasn't the only Revolver song to be inspired by drugs. She Said, She Said was influenced by a conversation John Lennon had with actor Peter Fonda in America while both were on acid. Dr. Robert was about a New York doctor with a reputation for administering amphetamines to patients and Got to Get You Into My Life was inspired by Paul McCartney as an ode to pot. Whilst on two of the best-known songs on Revolver, Eleanor Rigby and The Yellow Submarine, the often surreal lyrics Waits at the window, wearing the face that she keeps in a jar by the door and in Yellow Submarine's case, Childlike Wonderment was widely interpreted as a nod to countercultural sensibilities. All of this was not lost on Klaus Vormann, a musician and artist whom the Beatles befriended from their days in Hamburg and whom they commissioned to do the cover artwork for their album. Tomorrow Never Knows, in particular, immediately signalled to Klaus that the Beatles had shifted dramatically and were now moving towards the avant-garde he set about trying to create cover art that reflected this. Rendered in stark black and white as an act of rebellion against the fashion for psychedelic covers, it was made up partly of pen drawings, with collage sections including photographs by Robert Whittaker and Robert Freeman. Whittaker also took the photograph on the rear of the LP. Klaus emphasised their hair in his line drawing, which he drew from memory, with photos placed as if to suggest the explosion of ideas spewing forth from their heads, almost conjuring the myth of Samson. The cover was also the second album, along with Rubber Soul, to not feature the band's name. The Beatles loved Vorman's scrapbook collage artwork, and the group's manager, Brian Epstein, was so overcome that he cried tears of joy. Vorman's payment for the album cover was just £40. He did, however, win the Grammy Award for Best Album Cover, Graphic Arts, in 1967. Revolver was an instant hit with the record-buying public. It topped the UK charts for seven weeks from the 13th of August 1966 and spent a total of 34 weeks on the chart. In the US, the album was the group's 11th release for Capitol Records and spent six weeks at number one. It was also the last time the label would alter the track listing of a Beatles album for the American market. Three songs, I'm Only Sleeping, Your Bird Can Sing and Dr. Robert had been included on the Yesterday and Today compilation, which meant Revolver was issued in the US with just 11 songs. Just one single was released from Revolver. The double A-side Eleanor Rigby, Yellow Submarine was issued in both the United Kingdom and United States on the same day as Revolver. The Revolver recording sessions also produced the two non-album tracks, Paperback Writer, which was released as an A-side single along with Rain. The single hitting number one across the world, spending two consecutive weeks on the US Billboard charts. In told, Revolver represents and encapsulates a unique time and place in history, not only in the Beatles' career, but in popular culture and society as a whole. A time when the Beatles were at the height of their powers collectively on the edge of dramatic changes that were to sweep through society. Changes that would motivate and inspire them both as a band and individually, launching them into different creative and personal directions moving forward. It is for this reason and the technical innovations born from the incredible experimentation of Revolver that it sits amongst their greatest works, if not their greatest, and establishes it firmly as one of the greatest albums of all time.